Hey, uh, what you watching? Oh, uh, nothing. Something really cool and artsy. Definitely not too fast, too furious. Hey guys, it's Phoebe from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down the top 10 guilty pleasure movies. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're looking at movies that some people may be embarrassed to like, but they're still pretty enjoyable and well-made. Let's take a look. Number 10, Resident Evil Franchise. Movies based on video games typically range from completely terrible to pretty okay action adventures, and the Resident Evil films are no exception. You're all going to die down here. While a couple of flicks in the series are fairly forgettable, most are exciting zombie adventure films, featuring a strong female protagonist. Paul W.S. Anderson is no Paul Thomas Anderson, but the director has a knack for impressive action and interesting characters, and of course makes an impressive looking motion picture. While the movies weren't high art, they are technical and well-made marvels. I'm not good yet. Huh? I think I'll have that back. <laughs> I can kiss you, you bitch. Number 9. Scary Movie Heather, has it crossed your little mind that your boyfriend was probably murdered and you're about to be slaughtered next? Really? This parody of horror movies led to a slew of imitators and sequels, and while Scary Movie 2 is a worthwhile follow-up, this very stupid but funny send-up of 90s scary movies tropes was never topped. Yeah. Where am I? Um, you're, you're behind the couch. <laughs> what? How do you know that? I can, um, see your feet. The very definition of smart, dumb comedy, the film primarily parodied the Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer flicks. Full of crass and crude humor, the film drew mixed responses from critics, but those critics and fans that didn't mind a bit of rude humor found it to be a great time. Oh, now what? Oh, I guess this is the big climax. Hope you don't mind if I fake it. Ah! Number eight, The Notebook. Sappy romantic movies or chick flicks are rarely considered high art, and are usually avoided by male audiences. Now say you're a bird too. If you're a bird, I'm a bird. However, there are plenty of people, both male and female, that love this romantic drama about star-crossed lovers. A solid script is elevated to an amazing film with the performances of leads Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams, whose careers both took off as a result of this movie. Why didn't you write me? It wasn't over for me. I waited for you for seven years. Now it's too late. I wrote you 365 letters. I wrote you every day for a year. The Notebook has only grown in popularity over the years, becoming a cult classic and one of the most beloved romantic movies of recent times. So it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be really hard. And we're gonna have to work at this every day, but I wanna do that because I want you. I want all of you forever. Number seven, Space Jam. While some Looney Tunes purists have turned their noses up at this live action animated mashup, the film is beloved by many of those that saw it as children and have since grown up. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Casting an athlete who had only appeared in commercials may have been a big risk, but Michael Jordan is great alongside the likes of Bugs and Daffy. Whatever you do, don't forget my North Carolina shorts. Your shorts? <laughs> From college? I wore them under my Chicago Bulls uniform. Every game. <laughs> hey! I watched him after every game. Yeah. Sure. I did. His charisma, along with other surprisingly talented athletes turned actors, including Larry Bird and Charles Barkley, rounded out with Wayne Knight and Bill Murray, and of course all the Looney Tunes themselves, made this one of the most popular family movies in the 90s. I'm gonna take this opportunity to retire from the game of basketball. No, come on. No. No, I'm gonna retire right now, and that's all there is to it. I'm, I'm gonna go out on top undefeated and untied. That's the way it's gonna be. Number six, Transformers. It may be hard to remember after the four movies that followed it, but the first live action Transformers film was actually pretty damn fun. The robotic characters were painstakingly created with some of the most impressive looking CGI ever put to film, but many of the other effects in the film were practical. Its impressive cinematography and sleek action helped make it the phenomenon it was. While the plot was largely MacGuffin-fueled and forgettable, what really shined was the relationship between a boy and his first car. 
Can you talk? XM Satellite Radio. Broadcast. Digital Cable brings you the broadcasting system. So you, you talk to the radio? Thank you, you're beautiful. You're, you're wonderful, you're wonderful. Well, that and an intergalactic robot war. <laughs> Number five, Saw Franchise. Many critics and moviegoers dubbed the Saw franchise as torture porn, and one that only drew in fans who wanted to see the clever ways that people could be killed. Those who don't appreciate life do not deserve life. My son appreciates his life. But do you appreciate yours? Do you appreciate your sons? While this aspect certainly has drawn a number of fans into the theaters, some dispute that term, with the series creators James Wan and Lee Whannell describing them as something closer to mystery thrillers that became increasingly violent as the series progressed. It's you! You, you did this to me. No. Did this to yourself. The films stand out from other overly violent horror franchises with the use of intriguing mysteries sometimes stretched over multiple films, complete with clever foreshadowing. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. Ah! Ah! Game over. Ah! Number four, The Expendables franchise. This is he wants to be president. The Expendables films are a bit like the Super Smash Brothers of action movies, with an all-star cast of the greatest action stars ever, cramming more and more heroes into each successive film. These movies star the likes of Sylvester Stallone, Jet Li, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, Dolph Lundgren, Wesley Snipes, Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Antonio Banderas, and Harrison Ford. And that's just barely scratching the surface of this assembly of action stars. Great. They've got a small army. What do we got? Four and a half men. Not so funny. They're appropriate throwbacks to 80s action flicks, with the inconsequential plot, cheesy dialogue, and constant explosions and over-the-top bad guys. What's not to love? <laughs> Number three, Batman Forever. There are good Batman movies, and there are terrible Batman movies. And then there's Batman Forever. Holy rusted metal, Batman! Huh? Road. It's all metal! It's full of holes, you know? Holy! Oh. After the success of Tim Burton's two dark and gritty Batman films, Joel Schumacher took the films in a different route, giving it a more campy and bright aesthetic. I will help you solve the greatest riddle of all, the mother of all riddles. Who is Batman? It took inspiration from Golden Age Batman comics and the 60s TV show, albeit with a more modern feel. How about... Mr. E. Mystery. And another name for mystery. Enigma. Mr. E. Enigma. Edward Enigma. We also have to mention that awesomely 90s soundtrack, which popularized Seal's masterpiece, Kiss from a Rose. However you look at it, the film still has more going for it than Batman and Robin. Serve something, Kahuna! Ooh, nice form, but a little rough on the landing. He may have to settle for the bronze. <laughs> Number two, National Treasure. If a film where Nicolas Cage steals the Declaration of Independence isn't a guilty pleasure, what is? We can't tell if this is the dumbest smart movie ever or the smartest dumb movie ever, but either way, it's a fun action adventure that makes its ridiculous premise enthralling. But if we look at this clock tower, we may find the specific time. What do you see? 2.22. That premise, of course, being that a treasure was built up over centuries by various empires, lost for centuries, and rediscovered by the Knights Templar. You know, the Templars and the Freemasons believed that the treasure was too great for any one man to have, not even a king. That's why they went to such lengths to keep it hidden. Afterwards, it was smuggled into America by the Founding Fathers, that hid clues in many of the nation's historic monuments. Add in Sean Bean as the villain, and you've got gold. Let him go, Ian. Let me find the treasure. No, now. Where you can figure out the clues for yourself. Good luck. Ben, I don't think you fully appreciate the gravity of the situation. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. What is it, boy? Oh, what? What? Four clowns? Well, the car's broken down. 
They're in trouble. What? And that dog is not talking to you. I'm gonna kill you the old-fashioned way. Number one, the Fast and the Furious franchise. This ever-expanding franchise started out with four middling action films with street racing, heists, beautiful women, tough bald guys, and awesome stunts. The film series did something unexpected when, beginning primarily with its fifth installment, it embraced the crazy action tropes it was built upon and pushed them to an over-the-top level, letting go of any notion of restraint. The results are some of the best and most self-aware action movies containing some of the best action put to film. More importantly, however, the motion pictures have an emotional heart, with the emotional arcs of the characters and their makeshift family just as pivotal as the high-octane action. Stop, Marco fly! Marco fly! Oh, shit! So what do you guys think? Did we get it right? What are your favorite guilty pleasure movies? Let us know in the comments below. And don't be ashamed of the things that you like.